Welcome my beautiful friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel. As you can see on the thumbnail, I said I made over $20,000 using only iDoor vulnerabilities or a broken access control, which is iDoor is a type of broken access control. So if you're interested and want to know how I use to find this kind of vulnerabilities into a bug bounty program and getting paid, obviously, please click the like button and the follow button and let's just get started. So what is actually an IDOR? So an IDOR is an insecure direct object reference and it is a type of a broken access control vulnerability. So let's just say you're trying to modify your username or trying to modify your email or trying to access your profile. So now the web application sends a request to the server and say hi give me the data of user 1234. So 1234 is your user ID. Okay, so the, as the attacker sees the request and say, okay, so what if I modify 1234 into 1235? That's the logic. So if it gives you the data of 1235 user, which is the user ID, congratulations, now you have an IDOR. As you can see in this application, we have user settings, we have the username, the email, and the telephone number. So what I actually do actually is get the email address, okay, first we refresh the page, okay, and we make sure the burp listener is on, and we go to burp suite history. So in the research, I do this, so I type my email here and click enter. Okay, so as you can see right here, we have two requests that contains our email, right here. So that's request containing our email, and that's request is doing the same Thing. okay so if we submit this request into the repeater and modify the two into three so we're saying give us the settings of the user number three so if we send as we can see it's given us another data another user's data and that's how IDOR works so we have sensitive data like username Usually it's going to be the full name, like the full name, last name, and email address, and another set of data. So here we can modify to four. So what's happened if we modify to four? As you can see, we got another user data too. So John Walker 90 fakeemail.com. So that's the basic of IDOR. We saw the previous example. We modified from user three to user four. We got the user number four data. So if you modify number four into number 100 or 200, we get the user 200's data. So that is an idol. But in this case, we have a different case scenario. As you can say, as you can see right here, the user settings, we have the same thing. We have the username, we have the email, we have the telephone number, it's the same data. So we copy the email, we copy it and look at on burp history and we paste it here. So let me explain you to this, okay? Let's, let me explain you this. So what I mean by the user email, we look for the user email in the burp history, is look for a private data or whatever it is, like an API key, a private file URL, or a name, username, like user's email. So you look for these data into the burp history so you can see all the requests are being sent to the server to get this private data. So now we have a list of URL, a list of requests that are getting this private data so we can manipulate later and try to get an IDOR. So let's just look for our email right here and we apply and we can see the, re the browser is sending two requests. We're sending this one and this one. This is just an example. So in settings, they are requesting our ID and it's given us the Charlie email 123. This is the phone number. So let's just send this into the repeater. As you can see this user ID right here, we cannot decode this ID. So what we actually do is we go to the application and look for other functionalities that may leak the user ID, like the comment, like visiting their profile or trying to report this user there is multiple action you can do so for example right here in our application we have the reports functionality we can report for example the user grapes we click on their profile we here we cannot visit their profile but we can report do you want to report user and we click ok but before we click this go to proxy intercept and we do this okay so we click enter as you can see we have a request is being made which, which is report user grace so we send this to the repeater 
and send it as you can see we got their id so this is our id which is this one it's the same thing and it's by 92 and here as you can see the same but on the second value you can see the user report about user so this is the other user user id so we didn't guess it but the application is leaking their video id so we copy this and paste it in our previous request which is our request and you can see the magic we got your name we got their email and we got their telephone number so this is how you should think if you cannot guess the value you should look for other functionalities like the comment visiting their profile or whatever application uh, functionalities they have as we saw in the two previous examples the first one which is modifying the numeric id from three to four to five and modifying the numeric id or you can also brute force this id and see the user if it's available or not and also we dealt with the uid how we can find the uid in other uh, parts of the application like the comment section like the bio visiting their profile reporting this user or whatever functionality you need to see your application that you are testing and click every button and test every function and please dig deep into this application into to get into requests that most of the attacker or most bug bounty hunter didn't get because most of bug bounty hunters gave up on the first day or second day and they didn't even test every functionality of the application and they gave up too early so if you looked for your id or numeric id on the comment section on the profile on uh, whatever functionality the app have and you did not find the other user numeric id or your id so what you're gonna do are you gonna give up no basically the answer is no there is multiple other option or other tests you should do so the first one which is create another user and use their id or their id to access the second user data some bug bounty programs accept this vulnerability so you need to look for it and if you find uh, that you can access to other user id uh, data so that's a bug you should report it and the second example i mostly do which is looking on web archivers like way back urls or way more these tools sometimes leak other users id from archiving their uh, session and the third example which is most bug bounty hunters do not use which is going into support channel for example let's just say hacker one support.hackerone.com if you see the support people are posting their error messages they're posting their problems into this application sometimes they leak on the error message their your id and you can report this to the application uh, using other uh, your id that you find on the support chat so you can find on the support channel like telegram also discord whatever the application provide you should look for all these options and try to test for an idol so you tested every function you clicked every button on the application but you had no success well sometimes it's not about just uh, modifying the user ID from 123 to 124 or UU ID to another victim ID. No, sometimes you need to bypass and look for bypasses into this application and try to bypass the app restrictions. One of the bypasses I had success with in the past, which is trying to modify the HTTP request method. For example, if it was post request, try to modify it into a put request. It was it was a put request, try to modify it into a post request, etc. Try to play with the HTTP method and see how the application interact with your request. And the second bypass I had success with in the past is trying to modify the API version. For example, it was get users v1 the user ID, try to modify it to users v2 users ID or v2 to v1 and try to manipulate the path of this API and see if you get uh, any data or any result with this and the third bypass I had success with also in the past is trying to uh, move it from one to three as a number and add a quotation it will be as dealt as a string let's just say you found an idol or an application or a bug bounty program that you're working in so I don't actually recommend you to report this bug 
directly to the program what i recommend to you is try to escalate this vulnerability and get a higher impact what i mean by this is chain it with another vulnerability like an xss or try to find a csrf token maybe you get full account takeover that gets you more chance to get higher bounty and a higher impact this is an example of what I was saying in the video. So this is a vulnerability I found in the past. I wrote a blog article about it. You can find it on Medium or you can find the link on the description. So I found Nidor plus an XSS. I changed the Nidor with a cross-site scripting vulnerability to achieve a full user's account takeover. So how I did this. So I found the parameter which is the event ID so I modify the event ID with a victim ID and it gives me his information and I was able to modify his event ID event data so what I was what I did is okay uh, I found another request which is trying to modify my event data so this request here you can see the ID and you can see a URL encoded so this URL encoded data it's give us this data so I decode I decoded it and it's give us uh, a text this is a text so this is the decoding of this string so I try to modify the test one two three into an XSS payload okay as you can see this is image source X on load confirm which is gonna pop up the famous XSS pop-up so I try to modify into an XSS payload Plus, I try to modify the event ID to the victim ID. And as you can see, I got an XSS and I got all the users of, of this application. I can brute force this ID for, I don't know, for a hundred or a thousand ID and affect all the platform users and get full account takeover of all the platform users, which is one of the coolest bug I found in the past. I got a critical of this and I got really good payments, good bounty for this one and that's it. Well, I really wish you enjoyed watching this video. If you're interested in learning more about hacking and bug bounty hunting, you can check out my store or you can find the link on the description. I'm posting all my private bug bounty reports and all my private video that I cannot post here on YouTube while I'm offering a one-on-one -on -one private coaching. If you're interested, please check out my store. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. I really enjoyed making this video for you. If you have any question, please comment it on the comment section. Thank you so much. See you in the next one.